Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to build a secure storage room, a room where hopefully people can't break into. This is a great place to store all your Minecraft treasures, and it's just a good thing to have in your house if you live in a community server, or if you have a factions base, or anything like that. And how this vault works is, you put in a key, a unique key, like in my lock and key video, and it cuts off some lava, which you might not hear since I'm probably talking over it, you won't hear the piston going, but it cuts off some lava, and then you throw this ender pearl across, go down through here, returns your key, which automatically gets the lava flowing again, and there you go, you have access to all your wonderful Minecraft treasures. And if you're going to trust your treasure to it, you're probably asking, how secure is it? Well, here's our first line of defense. You can't simply walk over the end portal. There's no way to walk over, you have to use the end, uh, the ender pearl. And that means if you make it across here, Unless you get lucky and land on this edge point here like I just did. Which, by the way, if you're on console edition, you can break that part. Then you're going to land in this lava and you're going to burn to death. So maybe you are a really smart thief. And you go down here, you dig down beneath it, since it probably wouldn't be floating in empty space on a real server. And being a smart thief, you build a log out evader, Which allows you to break right through solid blocks, even bedrock. So you go down here, you leave and rejoin the server. And as the server loads, you think about how that poor unsuspecting person is going to come home one day, and you're going to have all their diamond blocks and emerald blocks, and you're laughing to yourself, and you rejoin, and you burn to death. So I will be showing you how to build that today. So to start with, you'll need some bedrock, because you don't want people to be able to dig through the walls, and everything you would need to make a sorter, including the key. So if you watch my lock and key video, we're going to be using that. If not, basically it's just a modified item sorter that sorts for a unique item. In this case, it's going to be a named uh, named tripwire hook because it resembles a key. So to start with, I'll just lay this foundation here. And then we'll build the sorter. Any sorter will work. Uh, but this is a, a sorter A for my two sorters video. And the same sorter I used in the lock and key video. So build this sorter, it's an almost square shape. And now for now just have your bottom hopper facing off in this direction. Normally we'd have it going to a payment chest if we were making an automated shop or something like that. But for now just leave it facing this way. So we want 22 on the top with 18 on the left. That's a total of 22 and if you put one more then one goes into the bottom. We want one in the bottom as well. So that's the sorter mechanism all done. Now I'll go ahead and encase this in bedrock, because after all the whole point is to have this be a secure room. And next we'll dig out a, t a hole in the ground here, because the whole point of this lock mechanism is it's going to be allowing us to go through this hole here safely. Until you put your key in, it'll be trapped, but we'll set up the trap later. For now we'll just dig out a nice wide space for us to build our hole in. I'm not sure how much of this we'll actually end up using. And our first security measure is my personal favorite. We're going to put an end portal. And the purpose of this end portal is so they can't cross it. They won't just be able to walk into your, uh, you'll see later, but it's going to be a little hole that is an entrance to the vault. So having this end portal here makes it so they can't just walk right into that. And for those of you who don't know, uh, end portals are not breakable in survival. They're completely indestructible by TNT or any other means. So, you know, this might as well be bedrock, including the portal itself. So it's not like um, nether portals where you can just pour water into them. So we'll cover this up here. And you should leave a one block width. So the tunnel should only be one block wide and two blocks tall. And the reason you make it two blocks tall is so they can't place any blocks to just walk over this end portal. If they're smart, they could place carpet, but don't tell them that. So I'll start to seal off this tunnel here, and the reason I left this gap on the other side is because that's where the hoppers are going to go through when you feed your key into your sorter over here. So I'll fast forward this while I seal the tunnel up. Remember you want it to be one block wide and two blocks tall. So now I'm here on the opposite side of the end portal, the side that is not near your door, sort of. This is the side you are not entering through, but the side that actually leads into your vault. In other words, this is the midpoint. So grab a piston, a torch, redstone, a bucket of lava, 
some more bedrock, and we'll need some slabs later. And what we're going to do here is set up the piston so that when you put your key in, and the, your key will be going down below into a dispenser, when you put that key in, it cuts the lava off. So what that means is until you put your key in, this whole place is going to be flooded with lava. Also put a trap door, and that trap door is just going to make it so you can go through when there's no lava. But when there is lava, this trap door is going to be totally covered by lava. And then, you know, any thief will burn to death. And that's the whole point of this. So next, dig a little hole in the wall and put your lava in the hole in the wall. And put your piston in a position where it won't destroy the source block. It doesn't destroy the source lava, but where it will cut it off from the trap door. So you could see how I did it earlier in this video. Basically, it's a three block space. First block is lava. Second block is piston when it's extended. And the third block is the trap door. So I've sealed off this roof here, and what you're going to have to do here is throw an ender pearl across here, like this, and you see it's flooded with lava. And if you try to block that lava off with a block, you won't be able to access the vault. And if you break that block, it'll fill back up with lava. So that's the whole idea, and most of the time you won't even land on that other side. And then if you're on console edition, I don't know if you can do this on PC actually, but if you're on console, you can actually treat the whole portal like individual blocks. So you see I can actually break parts of the portal and just seal it up with bedrock. That's not at all necessary, so this design still works on PC, but it's just a little more uh, sleek and compact if you're on console edition. So now I'm up here at the key hopper. This is the hopper we set up earlier to sort for our keys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig this down so it will lead to the same place as the trap door does. This whole place down here is going to be our vault room later, but for now we're just going to set it up so the hoppers feed into a dispenser down here just like this. And we're going to need that dispenser to set up the rest of our redstone, which will be the part that cuts off the lava when you put your key in. So you want just a line of hoppers feeding directly into this. Sorry for that edit there, I thought that torch was going to interfere with the hoppers, but it turns out it doesn't. So, that's nice, you can actually, it doesn't get stuck here. I thought it would, but you know, for whatever reason it doesn't seem to. So, you see, when we put our key down there, it eventually ends up in this dispenser. So the next step we have to do is make it so when there's an item in the dispenser, which currently the only thing that can get through the sorter and into the dispenser is our unique key. So when there's a key in this dispenser, we need to set it up so it will turn off our lava. So first we'll break out a space to run the redstone up, and obviously if you're on a real uh, naturally generated map, on a specially built super flat map, you'll need to dig out some space. And the whole point of this is to have a comparator measuring when there's an item in this dispenser, and then have that redstone signal run up to the piston and turn the piston on. So as soon as there's an item in this, so set up your comparator just like this. We'll actually need a repeater because the signal is going to be very faint. So set up a comparator connected to a repeater, and then we'll set up that repeater mostly with slabs. Use a few blocks of bedrock here. And we use slabs just because it doesn't cut off the redstone. It's an easy way to run redstone directly upward. And I guess we're on the wrong side here, so we'll actually need to curve it around. Not the most compact way of doing it, to be honest, but I don't want to don't want to uh, put it all in too small of a space for you guys to really understand what's happening. So this is just a line of redstone running over to where it's going to power that piston. And this line of redstone again is connected to that comparator which is measuring the dispenser. So let's test this out. Put a key in our hopper here. There you go. It lights up that redstone. But it doesn't seem to be cutting that lava off. I must have made some mistake. Let me see. Oh, there we go. I thought this was above the piston. It's just next to the piston. So we'll put some redstone there, and there we go. So now you see when that redstone lights up, it cuts off the lava. And that's exactly what you need it to do, because that's what will make it safe to enter your vault room. So I'm going to fast forward through this here while I fill in this whole room with uh, bedrock. And this will just also be the, what we'll need to set up our pressure plate, which will return the key to us. We'll worry about that in a second. I'll fast forward through this here. So we have our wooden pressure plate there right next to the dispenser, but it's not actually powering the dispenser. 
So you see right here, we're going to place a repeater. So when anybody stands on that pressure plate, this repeater gets activated. And then we're going to set it up so that redstone signal actually powers the dispenser. And that's actually very easy if you set up your room as I did here. But the important thing is it doesn't have to be exactly as I have it. But that's all you have to do if you set it up like this. That will power your dispenser when you step on it. So that's really easy. Just two lines of redstone dust and a repeater. So again, because I was a little fast here, it was just that repeater. And then I had two lines of redstone. And the redstone powers a piece of bedrock which is directly next to the dispenser. So it's actually the piece underneath it. So when that piece gets powered, it shoots out the key. And the last thing is remember to always keep this trapdoor closed because you want people to actually land on it. If they just go right through it, it won't be a very good security measure. You need them to actually land on it and they won't know it's there because they'll be burning alive. Trust me, that a trapdoor is going to be the last thing on their mind. So that's it for the redstone, um, but that's not it for all of our defenses. We still need to protect against breaking in from the bottom by log out evaders and breaking in from the sides using the minecart glitch. So I'll be dealing with that next, but I'm going to fill this room in next so you guys can kind of get a feel of what your vault room should look like. So I'm going to fast forward to the video when that's done. So here we are, and you can see at the top of the screen there that this is where I placed my treasure earlier. I placed my emeralds here. And this is going to be our defense against log out evaders. For those of you who don't know, log out evaders are um, something that lets you leave the server and rejoin and lets you go straight through solid bedrock or any other type of solid block. So it's very important that this chamber is two blocks tall because it needs to be tall enough for a person to stand in otherwise they might just go right through and into your vault. And then you want to fill it with lava and that's really it. If they go in that chamber they'll burn and there will be no way out. So that's a good uh, anti-thief measure right there. So that's your first defense against log out of here. And your second form of defense here with the lava will be creating a pocket on the side of your vault. And that is because there's a, a glitch, at least on console edition, where you can use a curved minecart to go through a one block wall. And if you use that here, obviously they could break right into your vault and you don't want that. So as a final step here, remember to seal everything above ground in bedrock. Because if they can break your redstone and you can't even get into your own vault, that's obviously not good either. And I said final step, but actually we still need to build the exit here. So to build an exit, my personal favorite is actually the same thing we built a defense against, is exit by log out evader. It's extremely simple, easy, fast, and just nice and clean. For those of you who don't know, a log out evader is basically just you stand in this bedrock, or in this uh, trap door, you open it, you close the trap door while you're standing inside of it, and then you leave and rejoin the server. When you leave and rejoin the server, you get transported to any solid blocks on top of you. So you can use it to travel through two blocks of bedrock, or through, you know, 200 blocks of quartz, whatever you want to do. The other option is you could throw a ender pearl up through the lava. Of course, that has a disadvantage, even though you will be able to go through solid bedrock with a little bit of damage. That has a disadvantage of you have to leave the trapdoor open, which, like I mentioned earlier, is not a good thing, because it makes it a little bit less useful of a defense. And then, of course, the final option would be to set up another, basically set up the whole thing we already set up, but just to exit rather than to enter. But that seems like a lot of work to me, so I just recommend using the logout evader if it works on whatever version of Minecraft you're currently using. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for new tutorials every Monday and Wednesday. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope this tutorial will be useful to you.